Hi, welcome to the International Society of Hypertension, ISH Cafe. I'm Matthew Sparks. I'm an associate professor of medicine at Duke University. SARS-CoV-2 uses the ACE2 receptor to enter into host cells. The virus's spike protein recognizes this receptor, binds to it, uses the TMPRSS2 protease to enter into the cell, cause viral replication, tissue destruction, and injury. Inhibitors of the renin angiotensin system in certain disease states have been associated with altered abundance of ACE2, in some cases, increased levels. Thus, the clinical question that arose at the beginning of the pandemic was, does this abundance of ACE2 change the infectivity of SARS-CoV-2 or the severity of clinical COVID-19? Secondly, do the use of ACE inhibitors and ARBs impact this? As the alarm bells started to toll, many individuals and patients, physician groups, became concerned about this question. Lay press began to publish papers, and you started to see journals publish articles that dealt with the topic of ACE inhibitors and ARBs and whether they caused worse disease or improvement in disease. To review a few of these studies, it had been shown by multiple labs that ACE2 is increased in many cardiovascular tissues, including the heart, after treating with blockers such as lisinopril or losartan. This has also been seen in coronary artery ligation, a mouse model of myocardial infarction, where that coupled with the use of enalapril led to increased levels of ACE2 abundance. Human studies have also shown increased levels of urinary ACE2 in humans taking blockers of the renin angiotensin system, in this case, almost sartan in this Japanese cohort of patients with hypertension. So the, based on these studies, there was concern that chronic therapy on renin angiotensin system blockers could in fact increase ACE2, leading to increased infectivity of SARS-CoV-2. In order to collate all the research that was known, Kreutz et al. published this review showing all of the different studies, majority of which were animal models that looked at ACE2 expression in different tissues on and off drugs blocking the renin angiotensin system. As you can see, the majority looked at the heart. However, some looked at the kidney, aorta, and then various other tissues, including cultures, duodenal biopsies, and even brain. The results from these studies showed that a majority increased the level of ACE2. However, this was not uniformly shown. What is missing is studies that looked at the lung and human studies. Because of this, it was challenging to translate these studies into the current scenario of SARS-CoV-2, which causes lung injury. I also want to highlight this paper from Cuba et al. in Nature Medicine. This study was published in 2005, just after the first epidemic of SARS-CoV-1. This group used a mouse model where they used an acid-induced lung injury while giving the animals an infusion of spike protein from SARS-CoV-1. They then treated the animals with and without losartan and looked at lung parameters. They found that the mice who received both the acid-induced lung injury and the spike protein had enhanced ACE angiotensin II production. This was thought to be secondary to the downregulation of ACE2 that occurred after the inoculation with spike protein. They also showed that the change in elastase, elastance, in these lungs increased markedly with the infusion of spike protein on top of the acid-induced lung injury. 
And this was abrogated by the use of the AT1 blocker Losartan. This was also seen in the pathologic wet to dry lung ratio. Thus, this provocative study showed that the use of an ARB, Losartan in this case, could actually be beneficial in patients that have COVID-19. However, this was a lung model, uh, sorry, a mouse model, and this was done with the first SARS-CoV-2, and it was not done with a live virus. So many issues uh, were thought about when this was thought to be translated to human studies. To review, SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 has a high case fatality rate. Important risk factors were identified, which included hypertension, heart disease, kidney disease, and diabetes. SARS-CoV-2 uses the ACE2 protein for entry into target cells. Some, but not all, animal studies show that RAS inhibitors can increase ACE2. Animal studies show RAS inhibitors may lead to improved outcomes. However, there is a lack or was a lack of human studies and studies involving lung tissue. So in the middle of the pandemic in 2020, the research community was left with significant questions and equipose about whether or not these medications that block the RAS were either good or bad in the context of COVID-19. The field really exploded with research. This meta-analysis and systematic review published just a few weeks ago showed all of the observational studies that have been published looking at this question. On the top, you see the mixed subgroup, and then in the bottom, you see the hypertension subgroup. And you can see that the results uh, in favor versus against are pretty much back and forth. And the problem is that these multiple observational studies all have significant bias, often related to the decision to stop or continue RAS inhibitors. Patients admitted with COVID-19 who are very sick have low blood pressure, acute kidney injury, and these may be reasons to stop these medications that have nothing to do with SARS-CoV-2. In January of this year, we have the result of one of two randomized clinical trials. This has replaced COVID, published in Lancet Respiratory Medicine. This randomized clinical trial was spearheaded by Dr. Jordy Cohen from the University of Pennsylvania, who's a colleague and friend. It was conducted in 20 hospitals in seven countries. The inclusion criteria were that patients needed to be 18 years or older, been on prior ACE inhibitor or ARB therapy, and admitted with COVID-19 with a positive SARS-CoV-2 test. The exclusion criteria are low blood pressure, very, very high blood pressure, a known EF of less than 40% or just unknown EF, hyperkalemia with the potassium greater than five, an EGFR less than 30, or a urinary protein creatinine ratio greater than three. So basically it excluded individuals that might have reasons to either discontinue or continue taking these medications. 344 patients were um, approached, 152 were randomized into the continue group versus the discontinue group. The baseline characteristics included the age of average age of 62 years, and about 44 to 45% of the participants were female. The majority of the individuals were Hispanic of origin, mainly because majority of the sites were in South or Central America. Of note, a, a slightly higher percent had chronic pulmonary disease in the discontinued group. 
In the WHO COVID-19 disease severity on, on admission, we're majority in the moderate range. The serum potassium was four in both groups. In order to identify how sick these individuals were, a really unique four-tiered approach was designed, which scored based on if they died, get the lowest score, days on vent and ECMO, days on dialysis pressure and inotropes, or if none of those occurred, a modified SOFA score with area under curve was used. Thus, the lower score equals worse COVID-19. They had an 80% power to observe a 25% difference in the median global rank scores across the treatment groups at a sample size of 152 participants. They did not detect a difference in the global rank score in the continuation group versus the discontinuation group. Moreover, there was no difference in all-cause mortality or ICU admission or need for mechanical ventilation. Bryce Corona was a second randomized clinical trial that was published in, the, in JAMA a few months prior to replace COVID, or reported a few months prior. The population included about 393 men and 266 women in 29 hospitals in Brazil. 334 discontinued and 335 continue the ACE and ARB with similar inclusion exclusion criteria as replace COVID. The primary outcome was a little bit different. This one was just a number of days alive and out of the hospital through 30 days. And there was no difference between both of these groups, about 22 days in the discontinuation and 23 days in the continuation group. Thus, the results of both of these well-conducted randomized clinical trials demonstrate that patients on RAS inhibitors should not be discontinued unless there is a reason to do so, like hypotension, hyperkalemia. Results from randomized clinical trials demonstrate that RAS blockade withdrawal or withdrawal does not influence severity of COVID-19 in patients who are currently already on these medications. Currently, there is no reason to stop inhibitors of the renin angiotensin system in patients with COVID-19 admitted to the hospital. However, we still have several ongoing questions. One, there is an ongoing study looking at the de novo use of RAS inhibitors in patients with COVID-19. The last clinical question is whether or not the use of these medications increase the risk of infection. Uh, and this is a, a very tricky question to, to answer. However, currently, until more research is conducted, the current thinking is that these medications do not appear to alter the clinical course of this disease. Thank you, and here is information on how to join the International Society of Hypertension, and thank you so much for your interest, and have a good day.